Today we're going to learn how material instant constants can be used to end up speeding up your workflow and actually make the engine perform faster. Now normally how you would create materials for objects is by right clicking and choosing the new material option. And that's how all materials are, are created within Unreal. However, the problem with materials is that you have to when you create them, go into the material editor and inside the material editor move these nodes around and connect them up. Now that's not a problem until you start getting a lot of objects. And for the most part a lot of objects share the same types of characteristics when it comes to their materials. They all have some form of color map which is what's considered the diffuse, some form of normal map which ends up giving you the lighting detail as it goes across the surface, as well as some form of specular map that you can end up putting in to control where it should be dull as opposed to shiny. So what we find though is that the majority of materials use this basic setup. And if we had to do this for every single object that we had in a game, it would be very tedious to set each one of these nodes up by connecting these dots and then hitting the green checkbox and letting it go through its deal. Now when it goes through its deal like you just saw there, what it's actually doing is taking this node structure you see and compiling it into HLSL code, which is the coding that's behind all the material systems with inside of Unreal. And I don't know about you, but this is really difficult to read and I can understand that it would take some time for this thing to compile, especially when you get node structures that are very, very large. However, what ends up happening is we have this code that has to be run for every material that exists. So there's a way we can use material instances to speed it up. What a material instance is, is it's this code that we already have, but it's recycling that and just simply swapping out the things that we want changed. And we can do that by creating what's called a parameter. Now a parameter is a special node that you can set up that allows you to actually directly edit it from outside of the material editor. And you can do this in real time. But for right now, let's just go ahead and show you how we can use one of these. So this is a texture parameter 2D, which is the same thing as a texture sample 2D, except that it's exposed outside of the material system. So what we're going to do is we can just right click go to parameters and create a texture sample parameter 2D, which is the same as all the other textures. Now, you saw it come in and it has this really big long name. And that long name is actually going to be replaced by whatever we want to call the parameter name. So I'm going to call this diffuse. But you know what? I'm going to show you another way that you can actually do this. If you already had your texture set up for a base material like I have here called master default, what you can do is if you plan on using that as a parent and you've already put a texture in there for a test, go ahead and just right click on that texture parameter and it's our texture sampler and call it a convert to parameter here. And you see that's actually changed it here to a parameter 2D for me. So I'm going to delete that one. Come in here and this is my diffuse powered into the diffuse here. So I'm just going to call this diffuse. All right, and you see it shortened up the name and now it's the same. Now, an important thing to know with these texture samples is that in order for the texture parameter to work, it has to have a default texture in it. So I'm just going to put in a default texture that ends up filling in this parameter here. And that way, every time I duplicate or create a copy that references this master material, it already had that set up. Now I'm going to do the same thing on my normal map here. I'm going to call this one normal. And I'm going to do that for this as well and call it my specular. All right, whoops, got to convert it first. So we'll convert it and then call it specular. All right, now I have those set up. They're parameter 2Ds as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit the green checkbox. It's compiling those shaders now. And when I come over here and do master default, I'm gonna right click on it. And you're gonna see we have an option here called create new material instance constant. Now there's two different versions of an instance, but we're just gonna use constant for now. Click on that and it will bring up a dialog for creating a new instance. And we're just going to prefix it MIC and then call it, I don't know, rock, just for demonstration purposes. Now, we have our rock here, and you can see it has this normal map that's applied to it that we already did, as well as a specular map, and we got a diffuse in here. And what this window is, is it's the material instance editor. And as you can see, this thing popped up a lot faster than the material editor that we normally use. So when we click on this thing it pops up immediately. It's very fast and quick. 
And you also notice that those options we named diffuse, normal, and specular have shown up here. And what we have here is a slot that we can dump a texture straight into if we want to. Now this is where the power of instancing comes in handy. All of that stuff we set up here in the material system exists within this instance of it. And you can see we have a parent master default and this thing is the master default. That's our material and it's instancing anything that exists within inside this material. So what we can do is if we wanted to we could create an additional instance of this. So I'm just going to copy this instance, which is the same as if I just I just right clicked here and said new instance. So I'll just copy this and we'll call it rock2. So I have rock2 here now and nothing's changed. They're exactly identical. So rock and rock2 are identical. However, this is where the instance power comes in hand. We're going to go here and we're going to say we want to have actually a dirt diffuse. I don't know why we put dirt on a rock, but we're going to. So we come in here and what we can do is click on this diffuse option and we're just gonna turn that on which means we're allowing that to be edited modified and I'm gonna hit this green arrow with this selected in the content browser and bam there you go instantaneously we have a ground texture been replaced now you see that's where the power of instancing comes in hand I don't have to go in and create a new material through the material editor hook up all the nodes and all that stuff I can just replace out a new texture immediately now say so let's say I have a different normal map as well I can just click on the normal map and I can hit the green arrow with it selected in the content browser bam new normal map instantaneously that's where the power of instancing comes in hand so let's take it a little bit further we're just going to use a very quick expression just to show you a little bit more of what you can do with this uh, there's plenty of stuff to learn about parameters and I'll go over them later and you'll see me use them a lot in my tutorials but what we can do here is create a very quick expression we're just going to create a texture coordinate and we're going to multiply that coordinate by a parameter called a scalar parameter and what a scalar parameter is it's basically a float value anything from a negative value to a positive value so I'm going to multiply our texture coordinate by that much and pipe that into our UVs and right now you see it's it's whiting it out so what we're going to do is you have to give at a default value and you could have a default value of, of zero but when it comes to texture coordinates you have to have at least one or else it starts smashing them so we're just gonna put in one we're gonna call this UV tile hit that and you see it's it's a parameter because you always have the param that prefixes whatever it is and it's a UV tile and we have that little number there that shows what our number is in there we're gonna hit OK on this compile the shader and we come back in here and now if you notice I open this up whoa look at that UV tile has been placed now under scalar parameters of this option now imagine if you had made a single material for every object you had and you decided well actually I wanted to change one little facet of it but then you realize all of them kinda need to be changed well guess what you have to go into each material individually not with instancing however all you have to do is go into the material and go into the actual material end up changing something here in the material and it propagates to all of your instances of it and that's why it's really powerful so now if I click on this UV tile I go ahead and change this to 5 you can see now I've tiled this 5 times and that's really awesome however what's more awesome is that the other instances haven't changed so I can come in here and create a completely different tile for this guy and do 25 and I can open this up again it saves your values for that and you can you know swap out your specular make normal and so you can do a whole bunch of stuff with this material setup using parameters and as you notice there's quite a few of them and they all do something different but we'll go over those at another time some other time but that is the basics of how you end up using material instances it's a very powerful tool very useful and uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of that in the future